Disturbing new details. One of the freed Israeli hostages held by terrorists in Gaza is speaking out on the trauma she endured in captivity, detailing publicly for the first time the extent of the sexual assaults and torture at the hands of Hamas. 40-year-old Amit Susana has told the New York Times how she was held alone and chained up in a child's bedroom and sexually assaulted at gunpoint, held hostage by a man who said his name was Mohammed. The newspaper reporting that her account is consistent with the details she gave to medical professionals and a social worker immediately after her release. She was freed from captivity in the first hostage truce deal in November and is speaking out now for the first time publicly. So for more reaction, we welcome now Orit Sulitsianu, the executive director at the Association of the Rape Crisis Centers in Israel. Orit, thank you so much for joining us. So disturbing this report. Women's groups took so long to even condemn what happened, to acknowledge what happened on the 7th of October. Today, these harrowing details being shared by Amit Susana, terrifying accounts in captivity at gunpoint. The first time a released hostage has publicly spoken about what happened there. Unimaginable. Your thoughts, your insights. First of all, I think all of all of the world should uh, um, uh, admire the, the the ability of a mitzvah sosna to to talk about this. You know, in Israel, and I'm I'm telling you, especially to people who are not living in Israel and are hearing your news, it's very very hard uh, in our culture to confess and to talk about this kind of things. And, and even it's harder uh, to talk about this kind of things when it's like a Hamas terrorist raping and abusing you. And this is not like Me Too. You know, Me Too women all over the world and also in Israel dare to say this movie star raped me, this important person raped me, this minister raped me. This is one thing. It's also very, very, very hard. But it was part of a worldwide global movement of women talking and men talking about sexual violence out loud. But now it's a totally different story. We're in the midst of war. The Hamas terrorists are, are the worst nightmare of every Israeli woman. Just to think about it, it's very, very scary. And the ability of a myth to speak up because she knows how important it is because we in Israel face this horrible denial that these things did not happen at all. And you know, I, I'm the director of the Association of Rape Crisis Centers in Israel, and we know, we know that there's the, um, the woman that survived the horrific attack, that survived the Nova Party, that survived the, the kibbutzim, survived sexual violence and are alive with us and still not talking and maybe they will not talk but here that's the first woman that dared to say this out loud and it's not easy at all now everybody is interested to talk to her all the media and she will be remembered uh, as the first person that dared to speak but that will be for her lifetime and we should really admire her, but I think also protect her. You know, she spoke because I believe she understood how important it is, but she's a personal, she's a she's a private person, and we have to also take care of her and not uh, abuse, uh, abuse her with questions all the time, which I assume it will happen to her. And not only the unimaginable trauma that she went through in captivity, but she also spoke to doctors and social workers about what happened when she came out of captivity. Now again, speaking to the New York Times, and you're suggesting it will be to other media potentially down the line. How does it help in terms of getting out the message to the world about the evil that is being conducted as we speak and the fact that there are other hostages being held right now. Even the UN report recently suggested that it is pretty clear that inside Gaza, as we speak, there is abuse and torture happening with the hostages that are still there. What is your sense of the urgency to try and get that message out right now as talks continue in Qatar to try and get some kind of deal to get these hostages home? 
first of all, I think it's very important, but you know, I want to tell you something. I believe that if women were prime ministers and the heads of the coalition or women would were in charge, I want to believe that it would have t taken faster. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's very complex, the whole situation in Israel, but the torture, the abuse of men also. You know, I heard also stories about men. So it's women that are more vulnerable and, uh, and the prices they can pay are more horrific because they can get pregnant. And, and this urgency is horrible because, you know, so many days, you know, a meat returned after 50. She was, I think, the first uh, group of uh, hostages that returned to, back to Israel. Uh, and it's now that the, the time is even tripled since she returned. The trauma will be very hard and for a lifetime. So it's urgent, urgent, urgent. But the problem is, first of all, uh, uh, you know, it's a, the, the men to sit, and the, it's very complex a situation. And Hamas, the, you know, there is a big dispute. I don't have to repeat about that. And uh, uh, somebody has to see these pe people there, and the suffering is horrific. And I think it's so important, first of all, for the hostages that did not return right now. All the world should look at that because this is just part of being a human being. It doesn't matter if you're a Jew. It doesn't matter if you're a Christian or a Muslim. Uh, what the horrific acts, the torture, the sexual violence is unbearable. But that's not only it. This is something. It, there's a, another part of this story is that the world, up till now, there's a lot of denial and misunderstanding and not wanting to understand deeply the horrible sadistic acts. And you know, we're in Israel because it's such a small country. Every day we heard stories. You know, I can just share with you that just today I heard a story about a, a body of a soldier that was burned in Israel without a head. And then later on, the family found out that the head was in a refrigerator in Gaza. And why was it, I asked, in this refrigerator? Because they, the, 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 the people who beheaded this soldier, they get money and they, for every body. And because they cannot take the whole body, they just behead and take the, the head back. And it was in some place in some refrigerator in Gaza. Just to talk about this is unbearable, but there are sadistic people who are doing horrific things. They're not human. and. And the, and, and the people who are now in capti captivity should be released, and the war, this war should end, I hope, as soon as possible. As you say, the extent of the brutality, the evil, is just very difficult to process, and then compounding it all, the fact, as you say, that there is some level of denial in some parts of the world, despite the fact that people like Amit are brave enough to speak out a long road ahead. A long road indeed. Orit Silicianu, the executive director at the Association of Rape Crisis Centers in Israel, thank you so much, as always, for your time and your insights.